My name is Mitch. I'm from Art Soul Life Creative Studio here in Lloydminster, Alberta. Um, today I'm going to guide you through um, a wet on wet oil painting, a uh, very simplistic landscape um, doing an Arizona uh, terrain uh, with the cactus. I'm inspired by a uh, very famous wet on wet artist Bob Ross um, where I learned how to do this technique. Um, so let's get started. Um, we're going to start off, so a couple things I've done. I'm going to go through the colors in a second here. Um, a couple things I've done is I've, I've used a black gesso all over this canvas. And um, right in the center right here, I used some acrylic paint, uh, um, touch of cad yellow with some titanium white. And then I've gone ahead and cut out a little um, circular uh, piece of tape and stuck it on over top of the yellow and then just filled in the rest of it with that black gesso. So right now I have a yellow spot just right underneath here, which is going to be our sunset. All right, this painting is going to be a, a desert sunset with some cactuses. So let's go ahead. We're going to prep our canvas right now with a little bit of Alzerian crimson, a uh, very transparent color. I'm going to throw that down over the whole canvas, a very thin, thin coat. And here we go. Well, it's very transparent paint. You know, load my brush up. And I want to again, I want a nice thin coat. So I'm just going to start up at the top here, and I'm just going to use little X strokes to get that paint scrubbed into the canvas. Now usually I would do this step before starting the video, but I wanted to show you how easy it is and how transparent this color is on the black canvas. And again, if you have some extra paint there, you can move it and spread it around, which is why I'm doing those X strokes, just to get that paint spread across the canvas. Very gently, just brush it out. So I'm gonna keep loading up this paint and slapping it all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. Very nice transparent paint. Then you can barely see it on your camera here on your TV. I'm just going to bring some down, bring it down to the bottom, and have a little reflection down here from the sun. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush, and we're going to start making the magic happen. It's very simplistic colors. Once we have this crimson on our background, uh, we're usually going to be going in with um, um, some white, titanium white, and some cad yellow right off the start. And for that, we're going to use a fan brush. So I'm going to go in here. Uh, Horizon is just below my little sticker right here. And we're just going to go in and put some clouds in. We're going to mix up um, some titanium white uh, with that cad yellow. We're just going to scrub it in using the fan brush. So I'm going to load up some white on my brush. Lots of white. I'll take a touch of this cat yellow here and I'm just going to mix it in and just dull it ever so slightly. There we go. 
lots of paint, load your brush up. And here we go, time to make a decision. We're gonna start off right at our sunset here, and I'm just gonna float some clouds out up to this corner of my canvas. I'm just gonna start right here, and I'm just gonna tap and twist my brush. And you can see how it's picking up that crimson. very important you wash your brush in between these stages or have a couple of extra fan brushes. We don't want to pick up a lot of that crimson and start back down in our brightest areas right here. So just give your brush a quick wash or switch to a new brush. I'm going to do about three or four of these up the canvas. Again I'm going to load this up and I'm going to start right here and I'm going to do the same and I'm just going to fold one of these right up into this corner. Brush a little wash, and I'm using an odorless paint thinner. Uh, I'm using a thing called a silly coil. Uh, it has a little metal coil in there that I can just gently brush my uh, brush across to take off all that excess paint. I've got a Tupperware, a beading rack, and a little wood stick inside there just to get rid of the excess. And then just dry with a little piece of paper towel. Make sure we don't have a lot of thinner on our brush. Load up again. And we're going to continue right off here and I'm going to trail one off this way. Again, and I'm just tapping and rotating and twisting my brush. I'm going to tuck it right up into this corner here and drop it down. That's looking pretty good. Now the magic comes when we start blending this together and uh, the first part is just that titanium white with the cat yellow is just picking up some of that crimson that's on the canvas and you're starting to see some very beautiful oranges and purples through here. And I'm going to load up a little bit more of that same color just a touch more yellow. And I want to just kind of put in a couple floaters in here. I want to just do some streak just lightly just bring your fan brush across just scrubbing it in and put a couple little streaky clouds in there I might throw a couple over here too and bring it right into that sunset and drop one right across here as well you can see how it's picking up that crimson that's on the canvas okay I'm gonna wash our brush up Go ahead and take my palette knife here. I want to take a lot of this excess paint. When I start going through and blending this, I don't want to start moving all that yellow that's on there where we first initially touched the canvas. So I'm just going to take my palette knife and I'm just going to get rid of the big globs of paint off of here. I want to blend it very gently. There we go. We're going to go back to our blending brush. I have a one inch brush here. And I'm just going to use very simple X strokes and very lightly on the canvas. I'm barely touching it. I want to just do little X strokes and start blending this out and picking up a little bit of that crimson. And again, we want to be very careful. We want to start in the light areas and work to our dark. So we want to make sure we just follow one stream. Don't go all the way to the end, picking up a lot of crimson and start back in the center. We're going to darken up that area right here. So we're going to wash our brush in between. Now I'm going to start off with this side stream here and I'm just going to lightly, I can't stress that enough, just ever so lightly, just little X strokes of blending it up. And you can see the magic happening right on the canvas here. Nice and light. Don't blend it all out. We don't want you to go through the whole canvas or we're just going to end up with a, a very nice light um, mold color right across the canvas. We're going to lose all of that detail. So I'm going to wash my brush up. I'm going to start back down here in the nice light area and I'm just going to lightly blend those colors upwards. Little X's barely touching the canvas. Just going in and muting it ever so slightly. A 
a little wash. And we'll do the same over here. Nice and light on the canvas. I want to blend it right out. And then I want to take my brush and just very gently back and forth across to get rid of all those brush strokes. Especially down in these little streakers down here. Just to blend those right across. And here we have all those beautiful colors. Just blended right across and it creates a beautiful little sky. When we're thinking about an Arizona, an Arizona sunset, I we want to be able to get all those rich dark purples and yellow colors in there. Just wash my brush. I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to mix up a little bit of some brown and some dark sienna. I might even take in a little bit of yellow ochre in here. I don't want it too dark. I want to be able to get a few little streaks in there. And I'm not going to mix it all complete. Um, I want those colors kind of mixed in there. I'm going to even take in a little bit of cat yellow or just a touch of white in here just to get those mar that marbly type of look on there. All right, pull it flat, cut across, get that little row of paint on there. And uh, let's Let's put in some some mountains here. Now, now we're looking at mountains. When I say mountains, I'm thinking more of Grand Canyon uh, type of rock rock features. So let's just start off right here and very lightly with the palette knife. I'm just gonna place in some rock features here. decide what they look like. And we're not looking for the almighty Alaskan or Rocky Mountain type of mountains. And we're just kind of looking for those Grand Canyon type of rock features just off in the distance here. I'm just going to follow that down. Think about what those look like. Very pillarish. I'm just going to get rid of some of this excess paint on here. going to follow that right off into the horizon here. Little bumps here and there. That's our color. And that's what we're looking for right there. All right, maybe we'll do a couple on the other side here too, just to fall in that horizon. There's some rock features in here. Here. All right, now let's make a decision. We're going to put some highlights on there. And remember, this is where the sticker is where we started our clouds. It's going to be our light source. So we're going to put some highlights on this side of the mountains and the rock features. So I want to I want to lighten this up. I want to get a bit more of this dark sienna, some yellow ochre, some cad yellow. And a little bit of titanium white in there just to kind of lighten it up. And I want to marble this again and create a whole bunch of different colors and textures on there. You can see that as it goes through all those beautiful colors in there. I might even take some crimson just to put a little bit of red tone in there like those rocks in Arizona. That looks great. I love that. All right. Pull it out flat and cut across, get that little roll of paint on there. And we're gonna start putting in a bit of highlight areas and I'm barely touching the canvas here. 
want that a little bit lighter. There we go. Lots of beautiful colors on there. Now I'm going to show you one side with the palette knife and I'm going to show you the other side with the fan brush on how you can throw in all of those little highlights in there. And I'm just making that palette knife very gently wiggle and bounce and drawing that paint out. Just on some of the highlights. We don't want to cover the whole thing in. And there's the start of our mountains. mix up a little bit of a darker color on there as well and do some shadows on there but that nice dark color that we put down is going to act as our shadow as long as we hit it with the highlight. So I'm going to use those same colors on my fan brush and I'm going to show you how we can go in and just do the same type of highlight if you don't have a palette knife at home. So I'm going to load up a little bit of this color on here, mix it up, lots of paint lots of different colors. I'm going to add a little bit of crimson in there just to get lots of different colors on my brush. And I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to tap my brush on just to get it in those highlight areas. So the same effect can be done whether you're using a palette knife or a fan brush. And again, it doesn't necessarily need to be a fan brush. You can use any brush that uh, you have in your little arsenal of art supplies. We can achieve that same effect just using the brush. Now, not a lot of detail. These mountains are far in a distance. We're just creating some light texture to show a little bit of detail because it's so far away. All right. Okay, let's wash up these brushes here. Before we get into our land, I'm gonna create just a little bit of a reflection coming down from the sun that's right there that we're gonna take the tape off in a few minutes. But I'm gonna go ahead and use my fan brush and I'm gonna load up that color we use for the sky. A little bit of white, some cad yellow. What I wanna do is just lightly start right at the bottom up here just kind of place it on and drag down there we go now we have our paint on there i'm going to take my one inch brush here and what i want to do is i want to place my brush on put a little bit of pressure and then just drag down it over and let's do the same thing and then very lightly, we can just go across and create that beautiful reflection. There we go. A little bit of reflection down in that. Now there's not a water source down there, although you might think that I'm saying I'm putting a reflection on. This is a reflection that's going to be right onto the land at that nighttime, right across the desert. same effect can be achieved when we're doing any type of water source in our foreground. It be a river, a lake, a pond, or even the ocean as a, as a seascape. Very easy little reflection that you can do on there. All right, so let's go ahead and take off that, take off that tape to do some magic in the sky here. I'm just going to use my palette knife and just lift up this corner. Remember, I used a yellow acrylic 
just underneath there. We'll let it dry. Just before I covered it up. Now I want to take my fan brush and I want to just gently, nice clean fan brush, make sure there's no thinner on it. Dry it off on some paper towel. I'm going to take some of this color from the sky and just kind of float it into there. And very lightly, I'm just going to drag my brush across and into my sun. Those little streaky clouds, I'm going to just kind of drag right in there. Just get them right across. Pick up a little bit of that paint. Soften up those edges. We're going to cover up this little bit down at the bottom right here uh, with, some, with some land. Now, if you really wanted to put some clouds on there, you can load up a little bit of that um, titanium white and cad yellow that we used up top. And we can just kind of throw in a few of those little clouds right across here. Just disperse it just a little bit. Bring that right across, just down the middle. Pick up a little bit of that cream. And disperse the top of that sun. And wash the brush up. back to our one inch brush. Now you can use a one inch or a two inch. Um, my canvas is a standard 16 by 20. It's not a big canvas. So I'm going to use my one inch brush on here just to get some control. But if I'm working on a bigger canvas, I may switch to a two inch brush um, just so I'm not here tapping all day. All right, let's take a little bit of that Van Dyke Brown. Make this fairly dark right off the start here. Van Dyke Brown, I want some dark sienna. And I'm going to come up into this color that we mixed up for the mountains, and I'm going to mix that in there. Nice and dark. A little bit more. Take a little bit of ivory black here as well, just to give it a little bit of darkness. dark. Again, I'm going to load up my brush just by tapping it. Load, I want to see that little ridge of paint right there. I'm going to load this brush up. Now that tapping motion that we're doing right now, loading our brush is the same kind of tap that we're going to use on our canvas. We're going to make a decision here. We're going to put in a little bit of ground in here. I want the lay of the ground. I want the ground to kind of angle down towards this little path we're going to put in here. So I want to curve the land. And I'm just going to start off just down at the bottom right here, right at the bottom of the mountain. And just tap it. Some darkness here. And at the base of that little rock feature, take some of that color from the mountain. And you're lighten it up a little bit. And we're going to put another little feature right here. Okay, when I'm tapping here, I'm just using the corner of my brush and letting the bristles come up and touch. Not smudging, just tapping. Letting the bristles do the work. I'm going to bring that right down into there. Just a little feature. Side where you want them. Come kind of right into there. Then just the tapping motion. Nice and bright along that ridge line. And then just go down, let it blend in nice and lightly with that crimson that's on the canvas right there. Okay. And tap some more. And do some over on this side here. And bring it right up to that mountain feature. You 
decide where you want them. I'm going to bring this one right across. I'm going to have this path curve just a little bit. I'm going to curve down to the corner that's closest to me right now. So when I do these ones, I'm going to start bringing these back. this up a little bit. As you start getting a little bit closer, This little street that's in here, that reflection, we're going to take that and create a path that kind of wiggles right down the center of that canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my two inch, one inch brush here. Go back to my fan brush. A little bit of that cad yellow and titanium white that we use for our our, our our sky and I'm just gonna put a little bit on my brush not a lot don't need a lot of paint then I'm gonna go right in here and I'm just gonna lightly go back and forth and just follow the terrain of the land and then just curve that path right down to the bottom so I'm just gonna go little tiny U just like this, just getting that color in there, picking up some of that crimson, going right up into those areas and blending it out. You decide how you want your path. And I'm just going to bring it right down into, right down here. I'm not hitting the canvas very hard. It may sound like it. That's just the sound of the brush on there. Nice and light. Not a lot of pressure. And I want to just take this little reflection and path right through. I'm going to pull up a little bit of this dark color right here. I want to just kind of make this sun disappear behind the sunset or right behind the horizon, I should say. There we go, and there's our reflection. We've got a nice little path right there. I'm gonna take my one inch brush and I'm just gonna gently blend that out. And then I'm gonna go back in and put some highlight on the terrain, give it some texture. Nice clean, one inch brush. And I want to just lightly go back and forth. Lightly, just to get rid of all those little fan brush. Brush strokes. 
nice and light. Not too far into the terrain. I don't want to drag that color across. Just to lightly mute it and give us the effect of a nice little trail coming down the side there. Now I want a little bit of distance in that. When we create distance, we want to have it smaller as it's further away and larger as it's closest to us. So maybe I'm going to fill in just a little bit of this. Just make it a little bit tinier. Closer to the sun or the horizon. And a little bit wider right down towards the base. All right. Okay, let's have a little fun. Let's go in here and do uh, some highlights on our land features here. So we have a little bit of terrain. We have a little bit of gentle slope in our land down towards that path, that little valley that it's kind of sitting in. Let's do some highlights. I'm going to take just a little bit, a little bit of sap green. And I want to come up here to my cad yellow. A little bit of white and some yellow ochre. A little bit of raw sienna. I'll take a touch of crimson, just to redden it up a little bit. And some Van Dyke brown. There we go. A little bit more cat yellow. I'm just going to keep adding yellow until I get the color that I want right here. That's a little bit lighter than the terrain. I'm going to tap my brush and load up that paint. I want to come in here and very gently, I want to just kind of hit the top space. Just to create some highlight right at that light source. Get nice and light. I want to just create the illusion of a highlight living in there. A reflection from the sun going down. Nice and light. Give me a little highlight on those. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Let's load it up. Just very gently. Barely touching the canvas. You're just using the bristles on the side of the brush. Create that little bit of a highlight. Now we've gotten a bit lighter down at the bottom here, so I'm going to take just a touch more sap green to this. And a little bit of titanium white. I'm going to lighten that out just a little bit. to the other side. Load my brush in. Come on up here. Don't get rid of all those darks. Don't fill this whole thing in. I want some of those darks in there to create some of the shadow and the highlight in your base color that you put on. And all three of those together will give you some dimension. All right. I think that looks pretty good. We're going to make a decision. We're going to throw a couple cactuses in here. Again, we always start from the furthest away, which is the sky, and then work right down to the bottom of the canvas in the foreground. Okay. Now, let's mix up some Let's mix up some new colors here. I'm going to make a little spot on the palette. I'm just going to put 
clean this off a little bit. Get rid of that. I want this very, very dark. Very dark. I'm going to get it a little midnight black on here. I'm going to put that down. A little bit of Van Dyke Brown. A little bit of Sienna. And I'll mix that in there. I want it nice and dark. This is going to be this is going to be the background, the back base color. Yeah, that's perfect right there. The base color for a cactus. Clean that palette night off. Go back to the old fan brush and I'll load up that dark, dark color. Nice, lots of paint on your brush. Look at that mold on there. All right. So let's make a decision. We're going to put a big cactus. Uh, we're just going to live right about here. So I'm just going to use my fan brush uh, sideways and just start off and creating the shape that I want. Nice and thick down the base. You can see that I'm kind of stopping right at one of those terrain lines right here. I'm going to have that just kind of disappear right at the bottom of that terrain line. I'm going to go in and put a little highlight down the bottom. So that's the start of our cactus. Move we'll back up again. And it's got some arms right here. So I'm going to come down starting right about here. I'm going to do the same on this side. This one's going to be just a touch higher. That's going to come down right about there as well. You can give a little indication of a third, a third um, arm on here. I'm just going to touch this one right in here. Bring that down. There's our first cactus. Round off the tops here so they're not so pointed. Okay, nice thick base here. The cactus can be fairly irregular, so don't try to get too much detail out. Again, this is a sunset painting. So we don't want a lot of detail. Things that are very close to us are very dark. So I'm just going to put that down. I'm going to switch over to my liner brush. A little bit of paint thinner. I'm going to just make a little nice, light, runny. Nice, runny paint. See how it's almost running right off my palette. I'm gonna give it a little roll and a twist to bring it back sharp. And I'm gonna put some in, I'm gonna put one back here in a distance here. So remember, as we get further back in perspective, we're getting smaller and smaller towards the horizon. So let's start off with the little tiny one right over here. that back up and let's do one right over here this one's going to be a bit bigger and I'm just going to start off with my basic shape my base I'll throw some arms on this little guy go. Got a few cactuses in there. Rinse off that liner brush. And now we're going to start putting some highlights on our cactus. 
So from right through here, we want to go back to our fan brush and we're going to mix up some sap green Take a bit of that. I'm going to bring it right over here. A little bit of yellow ochre. Make a highlight green. More on the lime side. Now, if you want to make a really nice green as well, you can take a little bit of black and add it to your cat yellow and it'll make a very nice green, almost like a forest green that we uh, use for evergreens and the dark foliage. I'll show you how that looks right now. A touch of black. Touch of black right there. You take some cad yellow. I'm gonna mix it in there. You can see that nice green that it comes up. It's like a forest green. Just a little bit of midnight black and some cad yellow. And that's the first color we're gonna go with. I'm gonna load up, I'm gonna tap my fan brush here. Load up the tip. And I'm gonna start putting some highlights on this cactus. Now I'm gonna start just on, remember your light source. So the light is here. We're gonna go on this side of all of our cactus and arms. I'm just gonna go in here. I'm gonna tap it. Not a lot of pressure, no movement. Just by tapping and without sliding as you're tapping, I'm gently working towards the center with a little bit of paint off my brush just so it's a little bit darker. You can see how it's starting to highlight and create a little bit of the spikes that are on there. I'm gonna load back up again. Do the same to all these arms. Using bristles to create the texture of that spiky canopus. getting a little bit of color and a little bit of texture. And by putting that highlight onto the darkness, uh, the dark, dark, dark cactus that we put on there, we're starting to create dimension. So it's starting to look rounded. I'm gonna load this up. I'm gonna flatten my brush out so it's nice and thin. Nice and thin, okay? Nice and thin. And I'm gonna do a little bit of highlight on this cactus here as well. Just watching your light source. Now I mixed up this nice light yellow over here. So I'm gonna load into that. And I'm gonna go back in and create even more of a highlight, but a very thin one right along that light edge source. No blending this one out. right on the edge. Touch it on. I'm going to show you a little trick now. On where the cactus arms come into the cactus here. We don't want this arm crossing in front. I want it to go to the back. I'm just gonna take a nice clean brush here. Just drag a little bit of that dark color right back down. So I'm gonna take a nice clean brush and start on this dark side of the cactus. And I'm just gonna drag it right down and make that little arm 
disappear behind the cactus. All right. Go back to my one inch brush. We'll take a little bit of that, that green, bit of yellow in there. That green we mixed up with a highlight. Take a little bit of that, tap it in. We'll just use that right down on the bottom here, just to kind of indication of a few little shrubs that are down in there. We'll do the same thing over here. I'm just going to tap it. Just disperse with those kind of sitting to the ground. I might just darken it up a little bit. I think we'll almost call that one done. Sign it off. And back to my liner brush. Go in with a little midnight black and some thinner. I'm going to sign that right down here. There we go, and we have a completed Arizona sunset. Thanks everybody for joining. I hope you had a great time like I did creating this beautiful little painting and learning a little bit about a wet on wet oil technique. It's a great way to blend colors right on the canvas. I mean, look at that sky. You can't get that effect uh, without doing a wet on wet oil, really. And very difficult with acrylics. A little bit of texture on those mountains and on the cactus. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you very much.